Welcome back to another video from Somos Biology and in this video lecture we are going to talk about WNT signaling pathway. What is WNT signaling? How WNT signaling works? And what are the components of WNT signaling? We'll talk about that in this lecture. First half of this lecture will deal with the WNT signaling molecule, the WNT signaling pathway receptor and the general properties of WNT signaling. And in the next half, we'll deal with WNT signaling pathway animation. The WNT is basically a short form for wingless related integration site. The full form is wingless related integration site. And WNTs are secreted factors that regulate cellular growth, motility and differentiation during embryo development. And it can act as paracrine fashion in many cases. Let's talk about it. The signaling molecule used is WNT ligand such as WNT5A, WNT10B, WNT16 and there are different examples. The receptor used is WNT receptor known as Frizzled receptor. The Frizzled class comprises of 10 family of members in humans alone. The effector molecule that is used in WNT signaling is known as beta catenin. So the WNT signaling pathway is also known as beta catenin signaling pathway. So WNT signaling or beta catenin signaling pathway are synonymously used. What is the role of beta catenin pathway or WNT signaling pathway? WNT signaling is an important pathway for immune cell maintenance and renewal. It regulates the progenitor cell's homeostasis thereby controlling the hematopoiesis or growth of all the blood cells in the body. On the other hand, the WNT regulates the crucial aspects of cell fate determination, cell migration, cell polarity, neural patterning and organogenesis during embryonic development. And this WNT signaling remains active from the mid or latter stage of the embryo development to the late stage of endo development. The WNT signaling is highly conserved signaling pathway evolutionarily. That's enough about the basics of WNT signaling. Now let's dig deep in into the WNT signaling pathway animation. And here you can see a nucleus inside of which we have specific receptor target molecules known as TCF LEF. But this TCF LEF cannot activate or initiate the transcription of target gene or WNT target gene if WNT signaling molecule is absent if there is no effector molecule present in the nucleus. So how it will do that? Let's look at it. We'll talk about the activated form of WNT signaling and inactivated form. So let's first talk about the activated form of WNT signaling which starts with WNT molecule and there is inhibited form of WNT signaling pathway we'll see later. So first let's look at the cell membrane. This is the cell membrane and once the WNT is present WNT allows the dimerization of the receptors of the membrane known as frizzled and LRP. Frizzled is the predominant receptor for WNT signaling pathway. So WNT along with WNT once brings the LRP and frizzled close together. WNT binds to the frizzled and then once the binding of WNT is done with the frizzled it is going to activate a protein known as disheveled. Disheveled is the inhibitor of a complex formed with CKI alpha, axine, APC and GSK3 beta. You don't need to know the full forms, just need to know the complex array of GSK3 beta, CKR, alpha, axine and APC. This complex is inhibited by disheveled. Because if this complex is inhibited by disheveled, then the beta catenin remains free and the beta catenin can go inside the nucleus. It can interact with TCF, LEF in the nucleus along with the TCF, LEF, beta catenin together interact to the DNA and this interaction causes the gene transcription and that transcription leads to the activation and production of mRNA which is WNT response elements. Now once there is no WNT then there is no dimerization, no contact between no WNT so no contact between LRP and frizzled receptor. No contact, no signaling. So in this situation CKI alpha the CKI alpha is going to release a phosphate group and what this phosphate group is going to do CKI alpha is active and it allows the phosphate group to be attached and associated to the beta catenin. 
Now you can see the GSK3 beta axine and APC now attached themselves to beta catenin. Beta catenin is phosphorylated. Now the phosphorylated form of beta catenin is going to be degraded by ubiquitin mediated proteolysis. It's done. It's gone. So as there is no beta catenin left, so there is no beta catenin delivery inside the nucleus, no translocation. Thus, the TCF LEF gene, TCF LEF cannot itself elicit the transcription, no gene transcription. So, no WNT response element activation. This is how the WNT signaling turns off when there is no WNT signaling molecule. But when WNT signaling is present, then the gene transcription continues. Arrangement are very crucial during the uh, growth and proliferation stages during development. So WNT acts as a primary signaling molecule, different variants of WNT acts as a primary signaling molecule to arrange cytoskeleton and also that helps in the gastrulation process. Here we will see two different separated pathways of how WNT works. Once WNT is in contact with frizzled receptor, it is going to activate Dishevel, DSH and DAM1. Both of them here, this dimer activates pro profilin and we know profilin and this DAM1 can also activate Rho and it can also activate RAC protein. All these proteins, profilin, Rho and RAC are a part of activator complex which is going to activate an arrangement of cytoskeleton. Profilin helps in actin polymerization while Rho further activates ROC which also helps in actin polymerization and RAC activates JNK which has the role in actin polymerization. On the other hand, we will see another set of pathway. This actin polymerization helps in the gastrulation. On the other hand, we will see another set of pathway. On the other hand, we will see another set of pathway where we have WNT signaling and a frizzled receptor. Now this WNT molecule binds to the frizzled receptor and then it activates disheveled. Disheveled is going to activate DAM1 as we know. This DAM1 pathway activating either profilin, Rho or RAC is going to further activate ROC, further arrange the cytoskeleton. While on the other hand, this disheveled can also release RAC1 which is going to activate JNK. JNK is going to activate June and ATF2 which function in transcriptional regulation of some target genes, the result of which helps in the cell proliferation and development and growth during the gastrulation event. That kind of concludes our understanding of WNT signaling pathway or wingless related integration site signaling pathway. I believe you have a clear idea of this. If you like this video on WNT signaling pathway and WNT signaling pathway animation, please hit the like button, share this video with your friends and subscribe to our channel to get more videos like that in future. Thank you. Bye.